Look at this guy out making improvements already this morning. Yerrigan, what are you doing, buddy? It's gonna look good, man. Hard working man right there. It's gonna be a good Monday. Trying to get some coffee in today. It's Terry and Judy. Good morning, you two. It's a beautiful day. One of my favorite things about this town is that I can walk a one city block and I've seen five people that I knew already. <laughs> I love this place. Greatest city in the world for me. So I've been working for a couple hours already, some homestead work, some office work, but now I actually have to, uh, have to go to the magistrate. I have to go in and testify about a house, I guess. So. Well, that was interesting. Unfortunately, uh, no filming in the courtroom, but uh, let me fill you in on what happened. Hey, it's Andy from the future. I just wanted to jump in here. I, I did a poor job or I lost a clip or something. Um, I didn't really tell the story of how we got here. So so essentially what happened is my first day back for summer serve, we were actually cutting yards and uh, the codes officer for Katianning actually called me the following week and said, uh, what yards did you cut? And I sent him all the addresses and he said, well, uh, yeah, I had fines out on a lot of those, so you kind of messed up my court cases. So. <laughs> so I told him, well, I'd be willing to go testify if you want me to, um, that we had cut the grass and uh, that the uh, that the owner of the property did not cut the grass. And so uh, I went and testified, and so I think that gives you enough background information. Uh, back to the video. So it's been quite an interesting day. Uh, the owner of the property actually uh, was mandated by the judge to have a conversation with us from Living Water Church. And so I get to see inside of this thing. This house that's been the bane of my existence for the last five years. I got to meet the property owner. He actually wants to get rid of it. And so who knows, maybe we'll be able to work something out with Habitat for Humanity. Get it into a situation where I have a nice new family in here. I get this thing completely redone and uh, make it so we never ever have to cut this yard again. This whole thing kind of brings me to a, another point that I wanted to make today. And that's redefining what is blight because I, I don't want there to be any misconception or any I don't want any hard feelings from anybody in the community when we're going around calling things blight that maybe I, I need to be more careful with my wording so let me explain a little bit more about what I mean by all this stuff so when I talk about blight and I talk about the fact that we have a blight map that has 246 houses on it there are not actually 246 houses that I would consider blight in Catanning Borough if I would guess with my definition of blight, I would say that there are between 10 and 20 houses in the borough that are actually blighted. Those houses are very obvious. They stick out like a sore thumb and they are like this house right behind me. This house has been condemned for maybe 10 years. The sign, the condemned sign on the door, just look at it. It's been condemned for so long that you can't even hardly read the condemned sign. That is a major problem. That is something that Catanning Borough should be massively worried about. That something has sat there for that long and nothing has happened with it yet. Now the reason that there are 246 houses on our blight map when there's only maybe 10 to 20 blighted houses in the city is that blight spreads. Blight is a term that actually comes from like tomato plants. It's a gardening term and so blight, you might have one plant that's actually blighted. Judy's harassing me now. <laughs> you might have one tomato plant that's blighted, but blight spreads really, really quickly. And so when you have plants that are planted densely, uh, like our houses are close together, uh, that blight that originally started in one little spot can eventually take over the entire garden. For me, it really comes down to incentives. You know, when you live next to a blighted house, your incentive to improve your own house is completely gone. It's out the window. 
and I don't put that blame on anybody. <laughs> I, if I live next to a blighted house, I can imagine that it would be very difficult for me to justify going out and painting my porch when my neighbor's house looked like that house that we saw earlier. Now the city is beginning to work on the problem of blighted houses. There are many different things that are in action, but the problem is that it might take five years, it might take 10 years for all of these things to be cleaned up. And so what do we do in the meantime? Just let it get worse? So what we're trying to do as a volunteer group, what we're trying to do as a church, is to try to be a catalyst to try to get some of these projects moving. You know, if we can come out and be free labor for somebody, or if we can come out and help with the cost of paint, whatever we can do, we want to do it so that we can try to get some other projects moving forward so that the blight doesn't spread. We want to isolate it into the small areas that it is, and we want to make sure that it stops there. Now there's one really good thing about this house. The Habitat for Humanity is actually in the process right now. I, I literally just found this out today. They're in the process of trying to take ownership of that house and probably tear it down. So it will be gone, the blight will be stopped on this end of Wilson Avenue, and uh, the little projects that we're doing are going to make an even bigger long-term impact because they're not going to be tainted by the blight surrounding it. And so when you see me driving around asking people if we can help with their house, please don't think it's anything negative on that person. And when we paint a porch, please don't think that they just like, we're looking for a handout or something like that. That is not the case at all. If anything, I, uh, I'm just really excited that they actually allowed us to, to be a part of their house. That they allowed us to come and serve in some small way. Not only does it give us the joy of serving, which is what we want to do, uh, not only does it make a small improvement on a house for a, a really, really good price, <laughs> but the most important thing is it allows us to build community. It allows groups of people to come together, serve the city together, and make improvements together. I've said it over and over again, none of us can do this alone. It's gonna take all of us working together to win the battle for the future of Catanning. And so if we've been able to do any work on your place or if we've been able to do any work on your street, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to serve. Thank you for allowing us to complete a project near you that helps to build community in our little city. I'm excited not only because some of these blighted houses are moving forward, uh, but I'm also excited that we have several more Summer of Serve projects that are coming together for the coming weeks. We just got permission to paint this house, which is gonna be a huge job for us. It's really, really tall. Wick City Saloon. I'm liking the red, it's looking good. This homeowner here was nice enough to contact us. Uh, she had requested some help. She's not physically able to kind of take care of all these vines on her property. And then underneath there, we can do a little bit of work on the wood shakes and uh, make a big improvement on this house as well. That's just the kind of project and just the kind of person that we want to help. And so if you know of any other places around, that's just honestly, that's what we're looking to do. Genuinely, we want to get out and show the love of Jesus to the rest of the world and the home next to our blighted house. Uh, she agreed to allow us to come out and do our first pressure washing project right there on her house. And I'm really happy about that because I was hoping someone would be willing to be our guinea pig and uh, she said it was okay to come. We do have someone who's a professional at pressure washing coming out to kind of show us the proper way to do everything. So uh, very excited about that and just uh, good things are happening you guys. There's a lot of good stuff happening all around town. Could not be more excited about having two of the truly blighted properties uh, soon to hopefully be back into a uh, positive momentum. And I just, uh, I could not be more excited as a city. Uh, I've been kind of dejected lately, feeling like we're really fighting against the current. And then uh, today it's like all the dominoes just started to fall and come into place and uh, pumped. Got to go run an errand and then uh, get home to the kiddos. And my wife too, I always forget to mention my wife. Only the real fans know why I'm here. Milk and bananas. You knew. I know you knew. Hey kiddos. Your milk. <laughs>